So I want to take you on a tour of my garden. Um, we just planted most of everything I'm going to show you. Oh, well, it's been about three to four days ago. Um, some things are coming up already and, you know, just want to show you around. That way you guys can be in the loop as things grow. So join me on a little tour. Let's see if we can make this interesting, huh? So starting at the dog. <laughs> Anyway, panning out across, this is our root garden. Um, started out with potatoes here. I've got a red variety and a blue variety. We enjoy trying those out. And going on from there, we have onions, radishes, uh, including the big Japanese uh, daikon radish and some turnips at the end. Um, it has taken a lot of space here. Um, I'm sitting next to my attempt number two at a potato tower. Um, most of you guys have not seen my potato tower video. Some of you have. Uh, my first potato tower was a failed experiment. Um, there are a few reasons why it didn't work out. Uh, I've learned a few things and I'm going to try round two. And uh, what I'll do here in the future, uh, I've got fingerling potatoes planted in here, which are supposed to be a longer variety, a longer a season potato. And I'll come in here soon, hopefully, and build this basket up all the way to the top. And as the potatoes grow, I'm actually going to try filling it with straw, uh, a mix of straw and a little bit of dirt. And um, It'll get most of its nutrition from what I water it with and the dirt uh, here, but then it'll be mostly loose straw, and I'm hoping that'll help keep it moist. I have two rows of onions. I'll show you the red ones because they're easier to see. I planted a bunch of onion starts, you know, bulbs. And um, being near the onions, I remembered that I also have a big row of carrots over there. I've planted everything in wide rows. I've seemed to really like these wide rows, planting them close together. As they grow, I can thin them out a bit, and uh, in the end, when they're all mature, if they make it to maturity, hopefully they do, fingers crossed, I can harvest them all together, dry them out, store them, those types of things. I've got a row of tomatoes along the back part of my garden here. You'll see, as I wander around, that I actually have a lot of potted little starts that, uh, that I'm planting here. And there's a story behind them. Um, I don't know how much of it I ought to tell because of keeping private things private. But, you know, long story short, um, met up with a few friends over here. Uh, one of them in particular wants to garden but doesn't have a lot of space and uh, we're kind of working together to grow some stuff and uh, he's going to help a little bit with the garden and we'll kind of share some of the produce and stuff so a lot of these things including this big long row of tomatoes and a greenhouse full of tomatoes comes from his efforts <laughs> and some connections he has and uh, now all of a sudden I have tons of plants to plant and it's awesome. This is going to be a really, really cool summer. Or the tomatoes will die and I'll just prove that I can't grow a tomato here. So many things are going to be different in this garden than what I'm used to growing. Uh, the season's different, the soil composition is different. I've never had to lime soil before, but we had to get the pH in balance here and more in line with vegetables. So, grow great blueberries, but uh, it's a little bit too acidic for the common vegetable to be happy in. Here I have a line of artichoke. Um, just transplanted them over and they're growing up. Um, we'll grow a little patch of artichokes over on this end and then I think we'll move them over to another place. These are really, really happy daikon radish and I am amazed at how quickly they came up. 
So along this edge of the garden, we've planted marigolds um, to help with the insects and stuff like that, see if that'll help out. We're kind of excited about trying that. That'll be the first year that I've, I've ever done this. So cool beans, huh? Before I move from this side of the road to the other side of the road, I want to show you something. Um, so this side of the garden, I did in a traditional way. I actually used the backhoe and my mattock to uh, soften up the dirt because my rototiller is still in Idaho. Anyway, um, I've loosened up the dirt and, and pulled rows and all of that. More of a traditional style. And you can see I've done it in somewhat of a lazy way, but I was just trying to get it done, right? And I'm recognizing how quickly the soil has dried out. It has, you know, just like normal. But I'm, I'm seeing it through new eyes. Um, the very top is, is very dry. It's not very far before you get wet soil. But having it all loose like this um, allows evaporation to occur so much faster. And the sun can hit the top of the soil and dry it out faster too. Um, we'll, we'll compare to the other side. This is my garden on the other side of the road. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a transplant of um, broccoli. I didn't transplant this out, it was like two days ago. And uh, it's a little wilty from transplanting. Um, but uh, if you look at the dirt next to all of this Siberian lettuce, yum yum, um, you can see that I don't have dirt really at all. Uh, I just have a series of sticks and leaves and stuff like that. And it's all dry, right? But as soon as I hit the first layer of dirt, it's wet. That is soggy, soggy wet. So already I am seeing um, that at least on irrigation issues, um, not tilling holds the water better. Um, this, this top mulch, if you can call it mulch, sounds good if I call it mulch, <laughs> the litter that's left on top takes the sun and shades the dirt underneath and then the evaporation doesn't go all the way up and through because there's a layer restricting that evaporation. Does that mean a no-till garden is better? I don't know yet. I don't have that answer. But I am glad that I'm not going to have to haul water as often to this side of the garden. And hopefully if I can get a good shade layer, get things growing good and dense, uh, maybe I won't have to water at all and the rain will take care of it. Get a lot of rain here. Even though it doesn't rain as much in the summer, hopefully shading everything out will, will help that. I'm being my own cameraman here and hopefully I can make this work. But uh, this patch here that kind of goes up to that mound and, and around, there's a square that is all broccoli. Lots and lots of broccoli planted over here. Uh, was I counting when I planted it? I, I'm pretty sure I have more than 30 broccoli plants in here. Uh, it might, might even be safe to say 40. So lots of broccoli. I like eating broccoli, so that's not going to be bad. Plus broccoli and other cold crops grow really well here in this climate. It, I have to be careful when I walk too, because it's so hard to see where I've planted things and there's other vegetation. So, you know, some of it I can walk on, some of it I can't. And I'm starting to establish little paths. Here's a little transplant of corn. First time ever in my life that I've transplanted corn. And it was perfect in this scenario because it's hard to pull a row. Since I couldn't make a good row of corn, maybe it would have been harder to plant. Uh, these have been perfect to get going. Again, it's hard to see the rows, so I don't know exactly how many rows, but I have seven rows, I believe, seven rows of corn. Um, sweet corn, nothing fancy. Uh, again, hopefully things will grow just fine here. Um, it just occurred to me, I was going to start with this, and you know, I'm, I'm aware that it's the first part of May, 
<laughs> so, holy cow, I'm planting a lot of stuff for the first part of May, but the th threat of frost is pretty much over here. Some of the locals talk about uh, how there could be a frost that, that'll come up, but coming from Idaho and growing in Idaho, nature is telling me that the threat of a heavy frost has passed and if it's going to affect my garden, it's going to affect everything. So, uh, it's way past time to plant. Uh, over here I've planted a few spots of zucchini. I found a couple varieties that grow, are supposed to grow really well in cooler climates. Oh hey, I have to show you my resident snake. Oh, there's a second one. Here is my pet garden snake. I don't know what variety she is, but she lives in my garden, he, she. And um, I do know that she is not poisonous. <laughs> and she is probably helping keep out a lot of pests. I don't know. There's no reason for me to kick her out. I've enjoyed working around her and hopefully she finds a home in my garden here. Here we have one of my bamboo. This is maybe temporary location because it's very close to the garden itself. Having the bamboo in plain sight where I could keep an eye on it was important to me, especially since uh, I really don't want it ticking over the entire homestead, right? <laughs> Uh, it's a common thing to read that bamboo grows really quickly and it's hard to control. Um, I did, dug a little deeper, uh, found out some information from a bamboo grower actually, and that person was telling me that uh, it's all about maintenance. Like if you know how they reproduce or how they grow, right, uh, how they spread, it's really not all that hard to keep them under control. And it's once they get out of control for like three or four years that you've kind of let, you know, they're, they're up and growing and you've forgotten about them. That's, that's when most people complain. But even then you just take care of it then. And, and it's not as bad as most people think. So just some monsters, when they creep up on you are very scary at first, they shock you <laughs> and then you take care of them. So here is a kale. This is a very special kind of kale that's supposed to grow giant leaves. I'm excited to try it out. So I've, I've spaced a few plants all around um, to fill in this whole area with kale. We'll see how it grows. Here with coal crops, we're supposed to be able to grow year round. Uh, kale and Brussels sprouts and a few of the root ve vegetables are supposed to really thrive through the winter because the winter's mild enough and they grow okay in shade conditions. Here I have a little bit of kohlrabi, not kohlrabi, oh my goodness, a patch of spreading onions, bunching onions. The, they're a Japanese variety that are supposed to just spread out and grow extra onions right next to each other. Um, they're kind of an invasive thing, so I'm going to make myself a little bed in the future. And right now this is where they can stay and I can watch them. And right next to the onions, I have some lettuce growing. I know this video is running long and uh, I hope you guys don't care. On this particular video, I kind of expect people to skip around and find what they want to see. Um, and if I'm too boring, I guess you can ditch me and that's okay. So I'm bringing you back over to the orchard. After I planted the orchard, a few of you shared with me um, some practices of growing things around trees. There's a few different terms for it. That's why I didn't use any of them there. But basically you, you don't just grow a tree, you kind of grow a microsystem around the tree that can help, you know, the tree can help shade the plants below and the plants below can help shade the ground and, you know, there's mutual benefit. The plants can also protect the trees from whatever might try to eat them. You know, there's a little more vegetation to attract bugs and animals and other things, right? Um, 
all sorts of things, all sorts of reasons to do this. And I was really excited to have you guys share that with me. And so around each of the trees, I've planted various things. Um, I just chose a lot of my leftover lettuces and uh, cabbages and stuff like that. And I've started to plant them around each of the trees. And um, I'm also planning on growing a row of tomatoes here in the center between the rows of trees, probably just this year. Um, just awesome. You guys helped me out and I wanted to show you and say thank you. So we'll see how this goes. It'll either work or it won't work. Another thing I've started here is moving moss to be my mulch. I've moved moss over here around the base of the tree. You can see here, this is a Chinese cabbage. I've got them growing all the way around the tree so they can grow up and shade this area. And I'm hoping that between the moss and the plants that I'm growing, um, we can shade the ground and we won't lose as much water to evaporation. Can't walk through the orchard without showing you the apple blossoms. They seem to be very vigorous at this point. Hopefully they take hold and root well. Very blessed to have this orchard. <laughs> so I just feel like to show you everything I'm growing will take much more time. Uh, hopefully this is a good taste. Um, this is everything that I've planted, of course, uh, for traditional garden scents. Um, I also have plants all over that you've seen a little bit of. Uh, blueberries, black currants, um, among other things, bunchberry bushes, nut trees, well, just filberts, you know, and uh, a fig tree. I guess I haven't shown you the fig tree. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for being a part of this. Uh, if there's anything that I left out that you're just dying to see, let me know. Uh, I'm trying to make more videos if I can. No promises, <laughs> but I'll do what I can here. And if I can get ideas from you and I have a little bit of time to do it, I'd be glad to show you things. Thanks again for watching, and thanks as always for taking this journey with us on Simple Ground.